Good morning. Welcome to the 16th annual presentation of the Catherine W. Davis Global Community Scholars Community Service Projects. This is an annual event, but after one cancellation and two remotely recorded events due to COVID-19, it's been four long years since we've been here in the Davis Auditorium celebrating the Davis Scholars accomplishments. I am truly pleased to be back, so I'll say it again. Welcome back to the 16th annual presentation of the Catherine W. Davis Global Community Scholars Service Project. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kent Trickle. I'm an associate professor in the English ESL and reading department at Westchester Community College. Over the first 15 years of its existence, I had the good fortune of co-directing the Davis program with my colleague, Dr. Lori Maida, professor in the sociology department who retired at the end of last year. I'm happy to see her here with us today and I'm forever grateful to her for the years we collaborated together. Of course, that means I also have the distinct pleasure of introducing the Davis program's new co-director, Dr. Elizabeth Miller. <laughs> Elizabeth is a professor of sociology who stepped into the role this year and hit the ground running during the candidate interviews. She joined the college in 2014 after completing her PhD at the CUNY Graduate Center, where she conducted community-based research. Her interest in social issues, equity, and integration, as well as her focus on hands-on and active learning make her a particularly good fit for the Davis program. I am grateful to her for her leadership and collaboration this year, and I'm excited to see what the future holds for our new partnership in this program. As many of you know, Catherine W. Davis's generous donation made the creation of this program possible back in 2007. Ten years ago, the Davis family added to that generosity with an additional $2 million to continue the program in Mrs. Davis's memory. And so here we are now, 16 years and one global pandemic later, still providing full scholarships and service learning opportunities for over 300 students from the U.S. and dozens of countries around the world. Just think how many lives have been touched over the years. The scholars, the beneficiaries of their service, their families, their friends, their classmates, and anyone who comes in contact with them. The scholars will tell you, service is infectious, and we're trying to start a new kind of pandemic. This year's cohort is smaller than in years past. After two years of remote learning and a lot of changes in the college and the community, we just didn't have as many applicants as we've, as we've had in the past. And of course, we're still pretty selective about who's actually awarded the scholarship of those who apply. So we have just seven scholars this year. As you can imagine, we were a bit concerned at the start of the program that we would not have enough critical mass in order to keep the program going, being accustomed to groups of 20 or more. However, the small cohort was not an issue. The energy and passion that this group of seven has brought to this program is truly awe-inspiring. We even wrestled with a hybrid remote in person working model for much of the year, which was less than ideal and these scholars persevered. <clears throat> We're looking forward to returning to a larger group of scholars next year, but you will see that a smaller quantity does not mean lower quality. It will, however, mean a shorter presentation today. We are proud of the accomplishments of all of the students who've come through this program over the years and these scholars are no exception. Our scholars this year come from the United States, Brazil, China, Colombia, Mexico, and Nepal. Throughout the year, these scholars have demonstrated not only their academic excellence, but also their commitment to service and collaboration through planning and implementing their projects. Some of our scholars have now graduated from WCC and begun moving on to their next stages in life. Some have already been accepted to transfer institutions like SUNY Purchase and SUNY Binghamton. Others will continue a little longer at WCC or join the workforce. No matter what they choose to do, we expect these scholars to be successful in their endeavors. And we hope that their experiences as scholars in this program have left them better prepared to meet the challenges ahead. We are again grateful to Mrs. Davis and her family and the WCC Foundation for giving us the opportunity to work with these extraordinary students. So without further delay, we have two groups presenting today. First, we will hear from uh, community connection, and then U.S. Pathways. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the 2022-2023 Catherine W. Davis Global Community Scholars. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. Good morning. We're really happy to be here with you today, and we're excited to share our program with you. We are the Connection Program. My name is Mayara. I am an international student from Brazil, and my major is Performing Arts. Hi, my name is Natalia. I am from China, and my major is Liberal Arts, Health Sciences, and Math. Hello, everyone. My name is Shay Barathoki. I was born and raised in Nepal, and my major is Environmental Science. We are a community program and we provide dynamic educational and interactive workshops to the immigrant community of Westchester. We partnered up with Neighbors Link and through their program Learning Links, we serve the children of the Mount Kisco Elementary School with our workshops. Our workshops are based on well-being, creativity, protecting the environment and self-love. Our mission is to establish relationships within the community by engaging with the children in an interactive educational experience about the importance of nutrition, self-love, exercise, and protecting the environment. Uh, for, we, we travel to Mount Kisco Elementary School every Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. to implement our workshops, developed for ages between 6 to 11. We carefully created hands-on activities based on each of our degree majors. Uh, furthermore, we also brought in volunteers that were experts in some of our workshop schools. For my fellow scholar, Mayara, her workshops were focused on arts and performing. For Natalia, her focus was on nutrition and self-love. And for my workshops, we focus on our connection, as suggested in our program's name, to our natural environment and how we have such a powerful if not the most powerful effect on it my main goal was to teach the children the importance of recycling reusing composting our everyday waste in addition the benefits of how growing our own food can be one of many ways to sustainably move forward we implemented these values by handing children the knowledge in fun positive unique ways so that they could easily learn from and effortlessly be able to pass on the knowledge themselves. After all, these children are part of our future and it is never too early to learn the vital role we play in our wonderful ecosystem. My workshops were focused on well-being and creativity. We did meditation, yoga, dance, a field day, and music production. With our workshops, we're always trying to help the children to move their bodies, to calm their mind, and to use their creative energy in fun and interactive ways. We love connecting with them and helping them connect with one another. They really love playing, moving, and creating their own music with the instruments that we created out of Recyclable in another workshop. My workshop focus was on the importance of nutrition and self-love. These workshops included a lesson taught through artistic expression. During this workshop, children were paired with a partner and wrote two good traits, one about themselves and one about the other on a sticky notes before going to a mirror to look at themselves and sharing them with the group. The purpose of this idea was to build confidence in themselves. Additionally, children painted using mass up fruits and vegetables that my peers and I made. This allowed children to express their creativity while learning about the benefits of nutrition. Oh, we've received many kind words from the Learning Links teachers, volunteers, and children themselves. On the top, we have Beverly's, the Learning Links manager at Mount Kisco, who guided us so much throughout the program. We are so happy that we, even on our tough days, were able to pull through in an enthusiastic, warm, and caring manner. The fact that she wants to work with us in the future is such an honor and it gives us hope for our partnership to grow even bigger. In addition, on the bottom here, we were invited to attend the Neighbor Link, Neighbors Link Volunteer Appreciation Dinner, where we met the Executive Director, Corolla Otero Bracco, who had heard of us and had a very positive feedback about our program. 
Coming from different cultural backgrounds, one thing we had in common was the fact that things were not handed to us. We learned and received by doing everything ourselves without the help of others. In this program, we have truly learned how to work together as a team. We learned this program to be dedicated and determined to help others without expecting anything in return. And most importantly, the children have taught us the value of gratitude and presence in life. They have shown us that if you can be grateful for what you have and for what life is offering you, or being present in the moment, you can always make the most of it. We are truly grateful for everything we have learned from working with, with the students at Mount Kisco Elementary School, our staff, and our program. With our workshops, we provided the children and uh, the principals and benefits of valuable concepts, incorporating well-being, creativity, protecting the environment, and self-love. We hope the children will keep on practicing all they have learned with us and will pass along to their peers and family all that we have shared with them. We also provided a copy of our program plan where we have a breakdown of our workshops to Beverly's. She really loves our program and she wants to keep on providing our workshops. We have provided all the tools they need to keep on offering our program and we truly hope that our connection program will keep on serving the children of the Mount Kisco Elementary School. We want to express our gratitude to everyone who helped make this program a reality. Without your support and help, this program would not have been successful. We would like to thank Mrs. Catherine W. Davis and the Davis family, Westchester Community College Foundation, Professor Ken Trickle and Professor Elizabeth Miller, the Neighbors Link Organization, Daniela Vardavino, the Volunteer Coordinator at Neighbors Link, the Mount Kisco Elementary School staff and students, Beverly Giller, the program manager at Mount Kisco Elementary School, the teachers Claudia Santiago, Jessica Rivera, and Nellie Lopez. We also want to thank the volunteers who supported us with our workshops, Fernando Colazzari, Alexis Del Sol, Anthony DiLorenzo, and finally, the high school volunteers. Thank you all so much for being here today. To each of our friends, families, professors, your patience and support throughout this program did not go unnoticed. We appreciate you all so much. Um, if you have any questions or ideas for us, you can find us on Instagram. And thanks again. Have a beautiful day. Good morning. Sorry, the clicker doesn't seem to be working. Uh, just give me one second. Oh, there we go. OK. <laughs> my name is Christopher Japinga. I'm a Westchester County native, and my major is accounting. My name is Roxana Ramirez. I'm a DACA recipient from Mexico, and my major is radiologic technologist. Hi, my name is Laura Vargas. I am an international student from Colombia, and my major is cybersecurity. I am Leticia Pedrozo, an international student raised in Brazil, and my major is nursing, and we are US Pathway. Our group comes from many different backgrounds, but we all found common ground in our desire to help the immigrant communities throughout Westchester. While researching, we came across some startling statistics. According to the Center for Migration Studies of New York, over 10 million undocumented immigrants are eligible for a green card, but have not applied. And nearly 25% of immigrants with green cards are eligible for full citizenship, but also have not applied. When we talked with members of these communities, one theme kept re-emerging. They didn't know where to get the information they needed. 
The people we talked to were incredibly eager to learn how to naturalize, whether they could enroll in college, and whether financial aid was available for them if they did go to college. But this information is both hard to find and complicated to understand, and most feared that disclosing their status to ask for help would put them at risk. With this in mind, our mission statement became clear to provide immigrants in Westchester County with legal and financial information regarding their rights, path to citizenship, and available financial aid for higher education. As the project develops, other topics were addressed based on the different requests and issues that we heard from the community. They included naturalization, adjustment of status and visa applications, employment law and workers' rights, family law, landlord-tenant law, victims of domestic violence, and financial literacy. We reached out to local nonprofit organizations to provide informational seminars on various immigration issues and free immigration clinics where community members could have one on one consultations with pro bono lawyers. We spoke to different departments of the college to help with advertising to students, faculty and members of the community, as well as small businesses that support the cause and our project. To provide the services our communities needed. We partnered with nine different nonprofit legal organizations, EM Consultations, Make the Road New York, the Legal Aid Society of Westchester County, My Sister's Place, the Community Resource Center of Mamaroneck, Neighbors Link, Frontera Law, Empire Justice Center, and the New York County Lawyers Association. Each of these organizations provided us with pro bono lawyers so we could provide accurate information directly to those in need. To advertise, we needed to create a strong brand. Our name was based on the idea of providing those without direction a path they could follow. To further this idea, we create our logo as a traffic sign, as we wanted to provide guidance on how to navigate the winding road they faced. Finally, our slogan, Take Action, Build Your Dreams, was formed on the belief that we could give others the hope and motivation needed to keep working towards their goals. Through our website, uspathway.net, people could find out about our mission, register for upcoming events, and find usable resources like available financial and scholarships. The list of attendees for our events was then provided to the team of lawyers and attorneys responsible for each event so they could understand and address the concerns of the public. Advertising was also done through our Instagram page which was a great tool to interact with the community and spread the word about our organization. We uploaded pictures of our events and placed reminders about them to increase the interaction in attendance. To provide in the information on specific topics, we, host, we hosted nine informational seminars from March to April covering change of status, student visa, naturalization, DACA renewals, financial literacy, employment law, domestic violence, and asylum law. Each of these seminars was, host, was hosted by a different nonprofit legal organization. This, sorry. These seminars averaged about 10 to 20 attendees and were recorded and distributed to our partner organizations. These events help expand the reach of our partner organizations while providing our local communities with their with the resources they need the most. We hosted our first free immigration clinic on March 18 at the St. Thomas Episcopal Church in Mamaroneck. There were about 100 people served, which included the ones that registered through our website, as well as walk-ins. In addition to the <clears throat> In addition to the immigration assistance, there were organizations that offered information about health care plans, housing, and tax filing services. The majority of the guests were Spanish speakers, so interpreters were assigned to each lawyer to facilitate communication between both parties, guaranteeing that the legal advice was made clear and professionally. To turn this event into a more welcoming environment for our guests, we started to solicit donations, which also contributed to the marketing of our brand. 
We had an assortment of cookies from several bakers that worked mostly from home. We also had cupcakes, sandwiches, and flavored Mexican water to add to the event. It was very rewarding to not only be able to feed the team and the public, but also be able to spread the word about local businesses that are empathetic to the cause and market their brand as well. Most rewarding was the donation of 20 Chromebooks to children under the age of 14 through the Devices for All program in partnership with the Loyalty Foundation. This gave them access to virtual, educational, and technological resources to improve their knowledge in so many different ways. Seeing the children's eyes light up and the parents' gratitude was an amazing experience. The results of our project were better than any expectation we could ever have. To start, previous sponsors and volunteers are willing to collaborate with us in future events. The Loyalty Foundation has expressed interest in working with us and, is, and was very pleased. Yonkers High School mentor Pablo Alvarez, who also runs the Lifting Up Westchester organization, opened up space in the Yonkers High School auditoriums so we can speak about our project. We added Feeding Westchester as a resource for the community to look for food pantry locations that will help combat poverty and hunger, promoting nutrition to members of the community. MVP Healthcare became a new sponsor for future events. NYCLA, located in Manhattan, would like our help to expand their services to Westchester. And we received a visit from a member of the Consulate General of Paraguay in New York and were asked to host an immigration clinic in Manhattan. Through the website, we received testimonials from the guests stating that the project, what the project meant to them and that it gave them hope to keep building their dreams. Sponsors also posted pictures of the events on their social media, mentioning that initiatives like US Pathway are important to promote equal access to legal resources and opportunities for all. The lasting impact we want with this project is that recipients of the program will share their newfound information with their local communities. We also want and actually saw increased collaboration and connectivity between the local nonprofits. We passed the Undocumented Student Support Act with the help of Student Government Association, which will improve accessibility of financial aid to undocumented and DACA students at WCC. We have officially trademarked our logo and are glad to announce that we have filed as a 501c3 nonprofit organization for the continuation of the program. <laughs> Through this project, we found that effective communication, openness, and trusting each other to do their work while clearly outlining roles and responsibilities is the key for the success of a team. We have developed supportive team skills by encouraging each other to contribute and learn the process of decision making and problem solving, highlighting our personal skills and help helping the community. We can't put into words how grateful we are for the efforts made by, by our sponsors, partners, donors and volunteers. They all went above and beyond. It was a an unique and very special experience for us. The memories we made will make our mission even stronger going forward. Because this project counted with the collaboration of many organizations, we do have a long list of people to thank. Please praise yourselves. We would like to thank Mrs. Catherine W. Davis and the Davis family, the Westchester Community College Foundation, Professors Ken Trico and Elizabeth Miller, the offices of admissions, financial aid, marketing, and English as a second language at Westchester Community College, Joseph Cook, director of WCC's Extension Center in Yonkers, and Marie Verini, International Students Advisor. Jessica Gramajo from the Department of Student Involvement. Joanna Morocho and Renzo Vivar from the Student Government Association. Danielle Charles from the Viking News. Luis Leon and Make the Road New York. Luis Zarate and CRC Mameranac. Peter Stewart and Neighbors Link. Robert Cisneros and Empire Justice. Hannah Sears and NYCLA. Laura Rodriguez and Frontera Law Firm, Robert Horn and the Legal Aid Society of Westchester County, 
Emily McDonald from EM Consultations, Christina Vasquez from JP Morgan Chase Bank, Silvana Tapia and MVP Healthcare, the Loyalty Foundation, our volunteers, translators and interpreters, and finally, donations provided by local businesses. Thank you all for your attendance today, and we would like this presentation with a quote by Mrs. Davis that was particularly impactful for us. There will always be conflict, but I'll remind you that love, kindness, and support are also part of human nature. My challenge to you is to bring about a mindset of preparing for peace instead of preparing for war. Thank you. All right, thank you for coming to the 2022-2023 Catherine W. Davis Global Community Scholars Presentations. We're very proud of all they've accomplished this academic year. I'd like to thank Kent Trickle and Lori Maida for their support and guidance integrating me into my first year as co-director. I'd also like to thank the scholars for being such a pleasure to work with. I'm lucky to have the opportunity to mentor students in this capacity. So this concludes our program, and we hope that you'll join us for refreshments, I hope, in the room across the hall of 110. Thanks again. Yeah.